Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Continuing on with the repair that I'm doing on the Caterpillar RD6 and 2H Series D6 starting clutch and uh, drive pinion mechanism. It's time to start uh, reassembling things. Now everything here has been thoroughly cleaned and inspected. Um, first things first, we need to get the new bearing put onto the shaft. So first you start with their steel seal that I discussed during the uh, disassembly portion. And this, uh, it's got a flat side and a shouldered side. The shoulder side goes down and bottoms out on these uh, lugs that are on the pinion shaft. And we have the new bearing here. The old uh, part number was a 1B4110 and it crosses to uh, the new cat number is a 6H3957. Um, this bearing seems to be a lot tighter fit than the old one that came off, so I am going to have to press this on. Okay, I've got this in the press and you can see I've got the bearing set up onto this uh, heavy sleeve here and I can still spin the outside. That's a good thing because I only want to uh, concentrate the pressing force on the inner race so I'm not acting through uh, the balls and into the outer race. I don't want to cause any damage that way so just keep pushing that down. There we go, it's all tight. Okay, out of the press, back into the vise, again using the soft jaws to avoid damaging the shaft. We have a new T-289 foldover lock, and uh, as you can tell, I've had to bend this inner tab in at about 45 degree angle. That's so you can clear these threads and get it into that key slot there. If you left it straight, you'd never be able to fit it. So with that in place, start the nut. Next step is to tighten it in, and you can see there are two outside tabs. They're spaced so that you could use either one or the other depending on where this uh, finally tightens in. Okay, so the nut tightened in with uh, this tab in alignment. You can see this one is uh, between notches. Like I said, they're pretty good at staggering those so that you can use one or the other. So, just gotta finish getting that seated down in that notch. There we go. That nut is well secured now. Can't back off. And one final thing I did off camera was pack this bearing with grease since there's no way to get any kind of lubrication into that after it's put together. So before I can put the shaft in the housing, I need to make sure the clutch spider is good. Here's your over center mechanism. It has all the, uh, the over center fingers that apply pressure to the pressure plate. Make sure your pins, cotter pins, links, and everything are in good shape. I've seen these cotter pins get quite worn on the pivot points and then the little ends break off of them and then they'll fly out and you got pieces flying around and, and just uh, really tears things up really bad. So make sure your plunger's good, that the spring is still intact, this one's all right. And you can see I took the uh, bronze um, engage or a bronze shift yoke off of this collar here because uh, it's kind of worn on the inside and it also has this kind of cobbled on oil catch cup on the top. Um, most of these I've been into, this little catch cup is missing. Like I say, this is not a factory deal. Somebody's made that and it's held on with a screw that has a hole drilled through the center and it's loose and it's just not a really good thing. So I was able to uh, do some research and I found, you can see the parts manual here, there's what the cup looked like. It's a 2B2112 and that's what this is. I found several of these new old stock ones. They look like they're a stamped brass, kind of tarnished, but they clean up well. So I had this other yoke that was uh, in a lot better condition, a lot less wear, but it was also missing the cup from the top. You could see where the old solder was, but the cup had been knocked off. So I just cleaned everything up really well, got all the tarnish off the cup, cleaned the solder joints, got some flux on there, and soldered that all in. So now we're left with something that looks uh, much more like the illustration and the parts manual. It's back to being uh, the way it was from the factory again. So as soon as I can get everything uh, greased up here and get this uh, new yoke or this yoke assembled back onto the collar here, we can start putting parts back in the housing. So now that I have the yoke assembled to the collar and the spider, I've got the new uh, 1A2682 foldover locks underneath the nuts right there. They're the ones that are made for the 5 16 bolts. All the critical contact points have some grease on them. So the first thing to do, start putting this together, is to align that yoke with the fork, get it engaged. 
You can take the shaft, start it in through the rear, and slide it through. Just carefully making sure the bearing is seated all the way using this brass drift on the outside race. There we go. Nice and sharp sounding, should be all the way down. Cap it off with the bearing retention plate and a new gasket. Now that I've got this as far along as it is, I want to just take a minute to talk about these pressure plates and clutch discs. You always want to have a good look at the disc because these are rather notorious for having the frictions loosen up from the steel center portion of the clutch disc. What happens is these rivets that hold the facings on will uh, get loose and then the facings work on there to the point that they rip loose. And then uh, this is usually what happens. This would be this flat side is the side that would contact the pressure plate, but the back side you can see is all chewed out and that's from the rivets that had torn out of the friction uh, disc were still in the steel center portion and just chewing around and around and taking material out so you always want to have a good look at the disc and make sure that that it's in good condition um, this one really isn't bad but I think I'm going to take it out and keep it as a spare because I have my local clutch and brake shop reline these and uh, they actually bond the friction material to the steel center as well as rivet it. So that should uh, do a much better job at keeping these frictions tight on the disc. So since I'm putting a new clutch disc in this anyhow, I think I'm going to take these pressure plates over, fixture them in the lathe, see if I can't renew the clutch surfaces on these. So both these cleaned up pretty well in the lathe and a uh, lot smoother finish on there so they should be a lot better for the new disc. Another thing I was going to mention but I forgot to earlier, when I have these uh, discs relined I like to keep them about a half inch overall thickness max. You can go a little bit thicker than that but uh, if you go much thicker you have trouble getting enough clearance between the clutch disc and this uh, rear pressure plate to insert that little uh, retention pin, that little key that you saw in the uh, disassembly video. So. That's kind of the specs that I like to adhere to with these. So, with that done, I'll just go ahead and slide these onto the shaft, figure out where I need to be here. There we go. Line up the bore and the pressure plate with the hole in the shaft. Slide them on the splines. Then drop the key back in drop right in once everything is properly lined up and it always wants to turn sideways give a little bit of help there we go slide the pressure plate over it to locate it now thread the spider back up to that rear pressure plate I can hear that it's time to pull that lock pin out for the adjustment and let it drop in a hole Check the clutch, still very loose. So we'll tighten it up some more. And it seems like it's getting close. Test it again. There, decent over center snap. That's what you want. So now it's time to set up the pinion and this, uh, this part of it takes a little bit of trial and error and some forethought. So I'm not gonna bother with putting the kick out springs in yet or the plunger. Just gonna leave all that stuff out. So uh, what you want to do is just start with uh, choosing a position to install the pinion gear and it can go on the shaft any one of six ways on these splines. Just pick a spot and you have the latch nut and a new 2B1864 fold over lock. So you want to take and uh, set that lock down on there. The two small tabs go in the splines and then just uh, start the latch nut and run it down and see where it's going to end up. So when the latch nut starts to contact the lock, you want to see where everything is. You got the two flats on the nut that you would want your two fold up tabs on the uh, fold over lock and in a perfect world to be right in the middle of. And we're just, uh, we're a bit off to either side with this. So we may have to reposition the lock, but you also want to look at the position of the shoulder on your latch nut versus where the bolt holes in the pinion gear are. So we got bolt hole here and one here, corresponding holes in the pinion sleeve, and we can see that the latches line up with each one of those holes. So if we slid all this together, 
way that it would have to go, we can see that the latch is well in line with the shoulders on the nut. So that's really good, but we need to get this fold over lock aligned a little bit better. So I'm just going to back this nut off and I'm going to rotate that fold over lock one slot back. There we go, let it drop in the next one. Now we'll see where it ends up again. All right, and as you can see here, we're still not good. We're even further off, further away from those two flats. So this is one of those situations where I'm got, probably gonna have to add a small shim underneath this uh, uh, latch nut right here to see if I can't get it to tighten in in a better spot to get those two fold over tabs better aligned with the flats. Okay, latch nut back off, and I've got these small little steel shims that are about 10 thousandths thick, and they fit pretty well on here. I don't even know what they were from, it's just something I picked up and have in the parts drawer. So, put one of those shims under here, we'll run it back down and see how that changes the position of things. Okay, so with that shim under here, the latch nut has aligned a lot better with these two fold over tabs, and if I put the wrench on this and gave it just a little bit more, I'd probably have them just about perfectly centered on the two flats, which is what I want. But now you have to reference your position or the position of the pinion gear back to the shouldered portions of your latch nut again. So we'll just check the sleeve on here, line it up with the bolt holes. There's the latch and you can see they would barely grip on the corners of this uh, latch nut right here. So that's no good. So it looks like if I take the pinion gear and rotate it one spline counterclockwise, reassemble it all, everything should finally be in line then. Okay, I've got the gear repositioned now. We'll just double check the alignment with the sleeve. Latch lines up right there, which shows that I'll get a good uh, grip on the shoulder portion of that uh, latch nut. So with everything finally where I need it, just make some marks here on everything. Mark the gear to the shaft the lock to the shaft. Now I can take all this back apart again and put the rest of these pieces in. Do the final assembly. So I did get a little bit of grease between the gear and the shaft. I do, I do like to have a little bit of something on there. Throw the springs down in and we have the fold over lock with the little shim. Make sure to align the marks and I've got the kick out plunger and the latch nut. Again, a little bit of grease on that. Compress that spring down, start it in. And now that the nut's been fully tightened in with the wrench, you can see the lock tabs line up perfectly with the two flats. So I'm really happy about that. Last thing to do is just uh, double check the alignment of your pinion latches to the nut again. And we'll have to compress that kick out plunger a little bit. Just like that's where it'll be. Boom, right in the line, should still get a full grip on the shoulder of that nut with each latch. So pretty happy about that. So now that everything has been verified to be functioning properly, just fold up those two locks and make it permanent. So now finally the last step is to assemble the pinion sleeve to the gear. So just line up the bolt holes and engage the latches so that you're not fighting all that spring tension. And then you can easily install the four sleeve bolts and the fold over locks. Like I uh, mentioned in the disassembly video, I uh, used to have the uh, old wire tie style bolts that had the cross drilled heads and I was going to upgrade to these fold over locks which is exactly what I did. Uh, the lock number is a uh, 2A2468. I buy these from Floor and Tractor. They, got, they have tons of them. And the bolt is a uh, 4H1350. That's the, uh, that's the new cat part number for these uh, bolts that use the fold over locks. Uh, the only difference is you go to the fold over locks, I've discussed this in uh, previous videos, the fold over lock bolt has like one extra, one to one and a half extra threads on it as opposed to the uh, cross drilled ones. And that is so that you can uh, still have full engagement of the threads inside the gear once that lock is under the bolt and actually taking up some space. So you can use the old cross drilled style even though they're shorter. I don't uh, advise it because you really need every bit of all the thread engagement you can get inside this gear because these bolts are so short. So, And one last thing, I do put some Loctite on these as well to go along with the fold over locks. It just keeps everything uh, tighter longer and it just, like I say, you need all the help you can get. Really, really minimal thread engagement there. So 
with your uh, bolts installed and the locks folded over. Check how everything works one last time. Spins nice and quiet, no more rumbling. So replacing that bearing really did help things. So now assembly should be complete. And just to take one last uh, quick look at the assembled unit here, I want to show you the reason why it's so important to have a good oil catch cup up on top of this bronze yoke is because uh, that's where this whole assembly is actually lubricated. Um, you go over here on the outside and underneath this little spring-loaded cap is where you would add the oil. And it needs to be able to run down and be caught by this cup so that it can make its way into the yoke and uh, keep all that stuff lubricated. You don't want to have that bronze yoke running dry on that collar and causing you all kinds of accelerated wear when you're actuating the clutch. And I just want to show you, i got another drive unit here that I've also just uh, recently uh, finished working on. This is for the uh, Chapter 3 of the Caterpillar Club, the Minnesota Chapter's ongoing uh, diesel number 11 auto patrol grader project. And this one basically needed all the same parts that this unit did. Uh, I had to put a new bearing in it, upgrade the sleeve to the uh, fold-over locks. Um, had to put a catch cup on that one. Reline the clutch disc, uh, recondition the pressure plates, basically all the same stuff that this one got. Uh, the inside of this housing was extremely dirty, a uh, lot of rust, no paint left on it, so I ended up uh, cleaning it down to bare metal. Got some good uh, gearbox, oil-resistant gearbox paint put in here, so that should keep that nice. I did leave the outside patina so that it matches the uh, pony motor that's going back up too, but should be two uh, real solid units here that are uh, ready for uh, many more years of reliable service. So I think that's about it for this video. Um, as soon as I finish uh, bolting this clutch up to the starting engine, I'll begin the process of uh, reinstalling this entire assembly back onto the RD6. Then we'll uh, fire it all up, make any necessary final adjustments, and see how it all works. So hope to see you guys back for that. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.